in the previous video we talked about the carbamine reaction correct it is a classic tool that is used to detect the presence of primary amines in a given sample but in addition to carbamine reaction we also have a couple of other reactions that can identify and classify the different types of amines basically primary secondary and tertiary amines and one such reaction is the reaction of amines with nitrous acid where nitrous acid is prepared in situ which means in the reaction mixture by the reaction of sodium nitrite with mineral acid like hcl so nano2 plus hcl gives hno2 and nacl now you see we have to prepare nitrous acid in situ because of its instability and highly reactive nature you see HNO2 is unstable and decomposes quickly in aqueous solution especially at room temperature or at higher temperatures it breaks down into nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide both of which are highly toxic gases and this is why it is not practical to store nitrous acid or use pre-prepared nitrous acid as the products of this decomposition reaction NO and NO2 are highly toxic and can be hazardous to handle now the three classes of amines the primary secondary and tertiary amines react differently with nitrous acid so let's see how they differ from each other and what products are formed in each of the reaction with nitrous acid okay so let's look at the first reaction reaction with primary aliphatic amines now here the primary aliphatic amines react with nitrous acid to form an extremely unstable intermediate called the aliphatic diazonium salt now this is so unstable that it decomposes immediately liberating nitrogen gas this reaction is highly exothermic and is characterized by the rapid evolution of the nitrogen gas here and this my dear friends is the key observable feature it is this vigorous effervescence of the nitrogen gas that distinguishes primary aliphatic amines from the other types of amines and because of this observable feature we can also use this reaction to quantitatively estimate the presence of amino acids and proteins in a given sample you see for every mole of a primary amine one mole of nitrogen gas is released and that means by measuring the volume of nitrogen gas that is released we can quantitatively figure out how much amount of primary amine is present in a given sample now if you look deeper into this reaction and try to look at the mechanism you know that nitrogen is nucleophilic right nitrogen atom has lone pair of electrons which has to attack an electrophilic species so what is electrophilic species in this reaction it is the nitrosonium ion as i mentioned before nitrous acid is highly unstable right and it has to be prepared in situ and in an acidic environment like this HNO2 gets protonated easily so the oxygen atom takes up a proton from the medium eliminates a water molecule generating our electrophile which is the nitrosonium ion now what do you think is the second step obviously the nucleophilic attack of the amine onto a nitrosonium ion right exactly so the next step is the nucleophilic attack by the primary amine and this gives us this protonated species where with the loss of a proton we get n nitroso intermediate and here in this step we can see a proton transfer happening so here basically we have a proton transfer you can see that the proton transfer takes place from nitrogen to the oxygen atom now oxygen atom further picks up a proton from the acidic medium and with the release of a water molecule you get an alkyl diazonium salt here rn2 plus cl minus now we know that this alkyl diazonium salt is highly unstable right it immediately decomposes releasing nitrogen gas and forming a carbocation in the process now having a carbocation intermediate means there is a very high chance that we would end up with a mixture of products alcohols as well as alkenes now alcohols are usually formed when we have water in excess where the water acts as a nucleophile and alkenes are usually the major products when we have any kind of dehydrating condition for example if there is low concentration of water or if the reaction is being carried out at higher temperature and remember a carbocation means there is always a possibility of rearrangement especially when a primary amine has branched alkyl group if this r group or the alkyl group is highly branched then there is a very high chance of rearrangement happening correct 
So basically what I'm trying to say here is that we should look at this reaction more of as a diagnostic tool to identify primary amines and not as a synthetic method to prepare either alcohols or alkanes. No, that is not the intention of this reaction. We actually have much more efficient ways to synthesize alcohols or alkenes anyway, right? So the point being the evolution of nitrogen gas confirms the presence of a primary amine. So from this reaction mechanism, we can see that the alkyl diazonium salt is highly unstable, right? But you know what? Aryl diazonium salt, which is formed when we perform the same reaction with primary aromatic amine is more or less stable. Yes, the reaction generates a relatively stable diazonium salt, especially at lower temperatures, 273 to 278 Kelvins. At this temperature, we end up with a relatively stable aryl diazonium salt which as we will learn later are extremely versatile intermediates. So what I mean by saying that benzene diazonium chloride is relatively more stable is that the loss of the nitrogen molecule is slower than in the aliphatic primary amines. This is because the CN2 plus bond in aryl diazonium salt is partially resonance stabilized and this makes the bond stronger. In fact, Aqua solutions of these diazonium ions have sufficient stability at 0 degree Celsius and because of this we can actually use this as intermediates in a variety of substitution reactions and we can introduce different functional groups into this aromatic ring through these substitution reactions. Now remember folks I have to stress on this point that these salts are stable only at low temperature okay. If we heat or increase the temperature, then these species also decompose releasing nitrogen gas. So the formation of diazonium salt at low temperature is the confirmation test for the presence of primary aromatic amines. Whereas the evolution of nitrogen gas was a confirmation test to identify primary aliphatic amines, right? Anyway, we are going to dive deeper into this particular section, the reaction of primary aromatic amines with nitrous acid later in the chapter. But for now, let's go ahead and look at the next reaction, which is the reaction with secondary amines. Secondary amines react with nitrous acid to form n nitroso amines. These n nitroso amines are yellow oily liquids or solids depending on the specific amine. Okay. The reaction, as you can see here, ends at the n nitroso amine part because we don't have a proton here for the proton transfer. In case of the primary amine, we saw that a proton transfer takes place, right? See, you can see that a proton transfer takes place from here to here and then with the loss of a water molecule, we were able to generate the corresponding diazonium salt. But in the case of secondary amine, as you can see, we do not have a proton here for the proton transfer. And that means the reaction essentially stops here, giving us an n nitroso amine. Now, this yellow oily liquid confirms the presence of secondary amines. Now, this reaction is distinct from the effervescence that we obtained in the case of primary aliphatic amine or the diazonium salt that was formed in the case of primary aromatic amine, correct? In this case, in secondary amines, we get a yellow oily liquid. Now, the last one is the reaction of tertiary amines with nitrous acid. You see, tertiary amines do not directly react with nitrous acid. There is no reaction happening. It simply undergoes the protonation. The tertiary amine gets protonated in acidic medium to give us a salt as you can see here. Now this reaction in itself is a confirmatory test because nothing is happening here. You don't see any kind of changes, no yellow oily liquid forming, no nitrogen gas effervescence which means the sample must have a tertiary amine. Now we can summarize the entire reaction of different amines with nitrous acid as shown here. So to summarize, primary aliphatic amines react with nitrous acid to form unstable alkyl diazonium salt and the observable change is the vigorous effervescence of nitrogen gas. Now primary aromatic amines form stable aryl diazonium salt remember but at low temperature okay. Here there is no effervescence but an aryl diazonium salt is formed. Now when we have a secondary amine reacting with nitrous acid we get a yellow oily product corresponding to the n nitroso amine and with tertiary amines no reaction is happening, we simply have an ammonium nitrate salt being formed. Alright folks, that's all for now. Let's look at another interesting distinguishing test in the next video which is the Hinsberg test.